My name is John Rees and I'm a visiting research fellow at Goldsmiths University of London and author of The Leather Revolution. So where shall we start? Well, unconventionally, we're going to start at the end. After two civil wars in January 1649, the English people did something absolutely unprecedented. They put their king on trial, found him guilty of treason against the people and had him executed on a scaffold erected outside the banqueting house in London's Whitehall. Now, on that day, there were two men, among others, on the scaffold. One was called John Harris, and the other was called Richard Rumbold, and they were members of a leveller movement. Now, who were the levellers, and where did they come from? For that, we have to go back to the beginning and start with John Lilburn, the best known of the levellers. He was already a religious radical in the 1630s, and he was importing illegal religious material from printing presses in Holland. He didn't believe that the established Church of England was a right framework for Christians to profess their faith. Now, he was arrested, given away by an associate. Um, he was dragged before the Court of Star Chamber, a no-jury court, um, in which it was typical that defendants were forced to confess as the main way of proving their guilt. Now, Lilburn refused to recognise the court. He said that no free-born Englishman should have to testify against himself or be found guilty other than by a jury of his peers. For this, he was found guilty by the court, sent to the fleet prison, taken out one day, tied to the back end of a cart, and whipped 500 times with a three-thonged knotted leather whip all the way to Whitehall, where he was put in the pillory. Now, he was still handing out the leaflets from his coat pocket as he was in the pillory and trying to make speeches until he was gagged by his jailer. This event made him famous. He became known as Freeborn John Lilburn, and he was cheered back to prison by the London crowd. And it was not until the meeting of the Long Parliament that he got out of jail. A little-known Huntingdon MP called Oliver Cromwell moved that he should be released, and he was. And he fought with Cromwell in the Ironsides in uh, the uh, First Civil War, and he was still associated with a network of underground and illegal printers. The writer Richard Overton was also running a secret printing press, and he was to become a leveller. So was William Larner, the man that printed Lilburn's pamphlets. So he was already part of an underground radical network. Now, as the First Civil War came to an end, there was an obvious question. What should the country be like? Who should rule it? What should be the settlement in the church? And in all these matters, Lilburn was a radical. And the leveller movement produced, in 1647, the agreement of the people. And they debated it with the leading forces in the army at Putney Church. Now, they demanded annual parliaments, a very wide male franchise, freedom of religion, and freedom of print. Now, the army leaders didn't agree with them at this stage, and their revolt at that stage was put down. But within a year, the situation was very different. The king had escaped from parliament, and there was a second civil war. That radicalised people. They finally saw that there was no settlement to be had with Charles I, that he was only going to return on the old terms, or not at all. And um, the radicals in the army, uh, combined with the levellers, to push through a final settlement, a final coming to terms. The moderates who wanted to bring the king back were purged from parliament, and a court was set up which tried the king and brought him to justice. And that's why Richard Rumbold and John Harris were on the platform that day. Uh, Richard Rumbold was later executed himself for a plot in the 1660s, and on his scaffold, he said these words, that no man comes into the world booted and spurred, and no man with a saddle on his back so that he can be ridden. And that, if anything, was what the levellers stood for. Uh, they stood for a democratic society. They stood for freedom of religion, at least uh, in the uh, Protestant church. And they stood for freedom to politically organise, to petition their main weapon, to be able to demonstrate, to be able to print freely. And these things, together with that first ever written constitution, the agreement of the people, these are the birth of democratic politics in this country. And we have the Leveller movement to thank for that.